we show this uh, movie with the asteroid rotating, one of the most interesting discoveries so far is that since we've been watching the asteroid uh, astronomically beginning in 1999, up into observations in 2018, we've seen the rotation rate of Bennu increasing. Uh, because of the latest observations, we can attribute this to a known phenomena called the YORP effect, which is basically how interaction with sunlight causes the asteroid rotation rate to increase. And probably the most easily understandable way to characterize this is what we call the YORP doubling time. In about a million and a half years, we predict that Bennu will be spinning at twice its current rate, so we definitely see the asteroid spinning faster and faster. We have learned a lot about the composition of Bennu from our initial observations, and we have three instruments that allow us to determine the minerals that are on its surface. We have a thermal emission spectrometer called OTIS, which goes out to very long infrared wavelengths, capturing the heat that's coming off, but also containing information about the minerals on the surface. We have a visible and near-infrared spectrometer called OVIRS, which characterizes the way sunlight is reflected off and gives us additional indications about the minerals on the surface. And then we have our mapping camera, the MAPCAM, which has color filters that allow us to look at very broad variations in reflectance in visible wavelength ranges. We have learned that Bennu is dominated by water-rich clay minerals or phyllosilicate minerals, which is very exciting and allows us to really go after the kind of material from the early solar system that we're interested in. But with the MAPCAM, we've been able to get resolved images, and in the graphic number two, I'm showing you in the middle there different colors uh, from our approach phase with the map cam. And then over there on the um, right, on the top, we've got the ratios of those different colors. And this matches a known mineral called magnetite, or iron oxide, or more familiar on Earth, sometimes called a lodestone. Magnetite is very interesting because it also forms in aqueous systems, often as a result of very intense action of liquid water. So this confirms Bennu as the ideal choice for our sample return target. On graphic three, I reveal probably the biggest surprise of the early phases of the OSIRIS-REx mission, and I would say one of the biggest surprises of my scientific career. Uh, when we got into orbit, our first orbital phase A, we actually were expecting that to be a time for the science team to kind of process the information that had already been acquired and for the flight dynamics team to learn how to operate the spacecraft in close proximity to the asteroid. But what I'm showing you here are actually a composite of two different images from the navigation camera. There's a short exposure image which is showing you the asteroid surface in the lower left and then a long exposure image. And if you look just off the limb towards the center of the image, you'll see a whole series of bright pixels. Those are, in fact, particles that are ejecting off the surface at relatively high velocity. So Bennu is part of a category of very uh, small group of small bodies in the solar system called active asteroids. We are seeing Bennu regularly eject material into outer space. Uh, we saw the first event occur on January 6th of this year, and then we instituted a more rigorous monitoring process using the navigation camera starting on January 11th, and we're able to continue that high cadence of observations through February 18th. And we have seen about 11 such events over that time period. More are being discovered as we get better at analyzing and processing the data and extracting small signals from that information. Three of those events have been substantial with dozens or over 100 particles being ejected clearly into the asteroid environment. The particles seem to be in the size ranges of a centimeters up to tens of centimeters in diameter, and they're moving with velocities of centimeters per second, which is very slow relative to the asteroid's uh, acceleration and escape velocity, up to several meters per second, which means they're clearly being ejected into interplanetary space and away from the asteroid. Some of those slow-moving particles have been observed over periods of at least a week, and they appear to be trapped in the asteroid's gravity field and are ending up in orbit around Bennu. So they're creating its own set of natural satellites. And then some of them have been observed to fall back onto the surface. Basically, it looks like Bennu has a continuous population of particles raining down on it from discrete ejection events across its surface. This is incredibly exciting. We don't know the mechanism that is causing this right now. In fact, we're still learning how to process the data, analyze the information, and make sense of what's going on at this asteroid. And then in my final graphic, graphic number four, it's just an example of one of our highest resolution images acquired to date. 
This is a shot from our polycam taken from the first detailed survey station, and it shows the general rugged nature of the asteroid surface. The field of view here is 70 meters. Uh, the good news, and the reason I picked this image to show you, is that at smaller scales, we are seeing patches of fine-grained regolith, which is exactly the kind of material that we expect to be able to collect with our TAGSAM sampling device. So even though the surface overall looks bouldery and rugged and rocky and really not what we expected from our ground-based astronomy, we are honing in on areas of sample material, and those will be obvious areas of interest as we move forward with the mission.